Welcome to Advent Devotionals Day 4. Today we're talking about why the manger is not what you think it is. Luke chapter 2, verse 7 says this, And she gave birth to her first child, a son. She wrapped him in a blanket and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the village inn. Jesus wasn't born in the manger only because there was no room for him in the inn. There's a greater meaning that we might be missing. And it's that the word manger comes from the Latin word that means to eat. Jesus is supposed to be eaten. But why a manger? Because a manger is not where people like you and I eat. It's where animals eat. Why animals? It's because with sin, you are more like an animal than a human. But with God's spirit, you are more like a human than an animal. You see, Jesus was the most human person to ever live because he was 100% God. When God made humans, Adam and Eve, he made them in his image to reflect him, and they were sinless. They were perfect humans. With sin, that got broken. They became people who followed the desires of their flesh. Who does that sound like? Animals. Animals, they don't think twice. They just kind of do whatever they feel like doing. Jesus never gave in to any animalistic desires. He always obeyed the Father's will. The power of the manger is that if we come and we see what it's really about, and we eat of Jesus, his sacrifice, his blood, his broken body for us, we'll go from being animals to being like how God intended us to be. But there's two problems here when it comes to the power of the manger. Either one, we say, well, I, I like being an animal. I like these desires. I celebrate these desires. I, I like to listen to songs about these animal desires, watch movies about these animal desires, read books about these animal desires. I love it. I want more of it. I want to do what my flesh wants to do. Or there's a side that says, I'm not an animal. I'm fine just on my own. I'm pretty well off. Like, I'm not an animal. Those people are animals. I'm not an animal. You know, I'm different. I'm, I'm not like that. Both ways are rejecting the power of the manger. In order for the power of the manger to really have its effect in our hearts, for our desires to change, for us to start wanting the things of the Spirit, not the things of the flesh, in order for that to happen, Jesus calls himself the bread of life. He says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Jesus is also the word of God. He's born in a place called Bethlehem, which translates into house of bread. And then at the last supper, he says, take this, eat it in remembrance of me. He says that the bread is like his flesh. He even tells a group of people who find it so shocking that Jesus would say this to eat his flesh. The manger was a picture of us consuming and eating and taking in and digesting what Christ would do as an adult on the cross. The power of the manger means looking deep into that, looking into the manger, looking into the feeding trough that Jesus was born in and realizing I need to consume him. Not all this other stuff, him. Why? Because I'm an animal and I need to change my desire, I need to be changed by him, and this is the only way. When you see that, then Christmas will really start to have its effect on you. Amen. Hey, what are some desires that you want God to change? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching this. My name's Alex. We're doing 12 days of devotionals, and I'm so glad you're here to join me for it. Check out Amen Podcast if you want to support this series or support any of my videos. They're all made possible by... Uh, those who partner with us at amenpodcast.com. Love you, and I'll see you in the next one.